Hello, everybody. Welcome to our story time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we get started, please take a moment to locate your chat bar and Q&A button because we'd love to have you be a part of this conversation today. Our story time today is with Glennis Nellis. Glennis uh, was born in England and she lives in Michigan. She's written over 40 books for kids. Some of her most popular books are her Little Mole series and her Good News series. And she's here with us today to talk about her book, Song of the Seasons. Song of the Seasons is inspired by the Bible and it journeys through the four seasons. It shares how all the special parts of the seasons of winter, spring, summer, and fall help us give praise to God. Glennis, could you talk to us today about why you put this special book together? Yeah, thank you so much, Olivia. I'm so excited to be here and to read my new book to you. Well, um, so one day I was reading my Bible and one of my favorite books in the Bible is the Psalms. And the Psalms are, they're like the poetry book of the Bible. And um, Psalm 98 talks about, let's sing God a brand new song. And um, the psalmist, the, the guy, it was probably a man who wrote it. Um, he goes on to say, let everybody sing. Let's play the harps and bang the drums. And then he says, it's something so fun. He says, let the sea shout and let the mountains sing and let the rivers clap their hands. And, um, and I thought, wow, that's a beautiful picture, isn't it? Of the whole earth singing God a brand new song. And also it made me think, if mountains were singing, what would they sound like? You know, would they have a big booming voice? That's what I tend to think. And if rivers could clap their hands, like what would that look like? And so really Psalm 98 from the Bible is what inspired Song of the Seasons. I thought I'm going to think about all the different seasons and all the different things we do and we see. And I'm going to try and imagine if the trees sang, what would that sound like? Or if the snow, you know, sang a song to God or sang or said praises to God. So that's what inspired Song of the Seasons. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing with us, Glennis. Um, would you be willing to read this story to us? Absolutely. It's my favorite thing to do is read. I hope we have some little listeners today. So what I want to do first, friends, if it's okay, Olivia, I'm going to do a quick picture walk because I like to do that because the pictures are so good. Now, friends, I didn't draw the pictures. I can't draw. I can write. So I wrote the words. But an illustrator called C.B. Kanga, his name is right here on the front. He did the pictures and he's brilliant at drawing. And so let me show you quick because what I feel like if I just read it, there might be pictures that you want to keep looking at and I'll have turned the page. So I'm going to do a quick picture walk through Song of the Seasons and it begins in spring. See the mountains in the picture? And in the book, there are two kids, two friends, and they're like journeying through the seasons. So they're going to go through spring and summer and fall and winter, and they're doing all different activities. And I am wondering, as I show you the pictures, how many of these activities you might have done? Have you ever explored by a river? And you know what, friends, if you haven't read this book, on this page, you have to look out for somebody sleeping in a cave. He is brown. Can you guess? You'll find out at the end. Have you ever done pig? I call them piggybacks. I'm not sure what you, do you call them leapfrog or something? I don't know. Have you ever done that with a friend? And look at the tulips. I bet you've done this. Have you ever picked those dandelions that you can, 
you can blow them and all the little parts of the dandelion, the seeds, they fly around and you make a wish. That's what our two friends are doing here. I bet you've done that. <gasps> friends, now summer comes dancing. Do you know what? I have never sat in a tree and read a book. Have you? Doesn't that look like fun? I'll have to try it. I just don't want to fall out. But I have done this. I have swung on a branch. Have you? Have you ridden on your bike? Maybe through a field of flowers? Doesn't that look fun? Have you ever been on a boat? I have. I love going on a boat. Have you... Oh, have you been walking in the woods when it's fall, when fall's starting? That's one of my favorite things to do. Here's the kids looking at all the animals. I bet you've done this, friends. Have you ever jumped in a pile of crunchy leaves? Even I do that, and I'm a grandma. What about this? Can you see what our friends are doing? Are they fishing? Have you ever been fishing? I'm not very good at it. I bet you've been to a pumpkin patch. This one is by a cornfield. Can you see the corn growing tall? And our friends getting the pumpkins for fall. What about this? Have you ever run across a log like a big tree over a river I have I, I honestly have it was scary I might tell you about it later but look on this page friends this is where the rivers clap their hands can you see how the illustrator did that isn't that so clever and now it's winter let's see what our friends are doing in winter time they are skating on a frozen lake. I can't ice skate, can you? Oh, we're back to the cave. Can you see what this is? Did you get it right? It's a brown bear. I'm so glad he's asleep because our two friends are really close. Be careful. Oh. And the last page, friends, I wonder if you can guess what this is. Have you ever fallen backwards in the snow and moved your arms and legs? Do you know what they're making? They're making snow angels on the last page, the last page that finishes up with winter. So aren't the pictures great? And now I'll read it to you. Thank you, Glennis. The pictures are amazing. I know, C.B. Kangar is so clever, isn't he? All right, here we go with Song of the Season. And as I read, I wonder if you have a favorite page. If you do, I think you can tell Olivia in the chat when we get to the end. And I have a favorite page that I'll share with you later. But this is Song of the Season. The earth sing God a brand new song from grass to mountain peak. And if you pause and close your eyes, you'll hear the seasons speak. When ice and snow begin to melt and springtime fills the air, a million buds begin to sing and rouse the sleeping bear. The tulips wake from deepest earth and shoot towards the sky. They bow their heads and whisper soft, our God is passing by. The raindrops sparkle on the grass, and as they gently fall, you'll hear the pitter-patter sound. It's God who made us all. A sea of grass waves in the wind and makes a wondrous tune that ripples up and down the hills beneath a shining moon. 
And summer comes in dancing then to paint the skies bright blue. And trees are filled with leaves that shout, look what our God can do. 10,000 flowers dance in fields and hum their lullaby. And grasses tall sway side by side beneath a singing sky. The summer ocean sparkle blue as waves crash on the sand and ripples whisper as they run were made by God's own hand. And every bird in every tree, each creature in each wood joins in creation's chorus. God made us, we are good. When summer days give way to fall and trees are dressed in red, tumbling leaves of brown and gold become the squirrel's bed. And high above, the geese fly south and make a wondrous sound. They beat their wings and loudly honk. Our God is all around. Late autumn sunshine sings her song when harvest time grows near. Her rays peep through the golden corn and whisper, God is near. The rivers clap their hands and chant in autumn woods aflame. There's no creator like our God. There's no one else the same. And now comes winter's turn to sing as trees stand tall and bare and snowflakes whisper as they fall. Our God is everywhere. Above the earth, now clothed in white, the stars in patterns shine and twinkle in the velvet sky, each made by God's design. And sparkling frozen frosted lakes that once were blue or green, all seem to sing a melody to one who can't be seen. Though all the earth's a slumber and bear sleeps in his den, God's promise echoes through the field, bring will, return again. The earth sings God a brand new song from grass, to a mountain peak. And if you pause and close your eyes, you'll hear the seasons speak. Wow, thank you so much, Glennis. That was amazing. Oh, you're welcome. Did you notice, Olivia, maybe our little mm -hmm. friends noticed that Song of the Seasons is a circle book. It begins and ends in exactly the same way. And so I did that because the seasons are like a circle, aren't they? They come, mm -hmm. they go, and they go round and round. Oh, I hadn't noticed that. That's really interesting. <laughs> um, so we have a couple questions here uh, that we'd like to ask you, Glennis. Mm -hmm. um, and it sort of ties in with what you were saying about the seasons being in a circle. But do you have a favorite season? Oh, Olivia, that is such a hard question, isn't it? Because, you know, like it shows you in the book, there is such beauty in every season. But if I have to pick one, I'm going, because I love trees, I, lo I just love trees, I'm going to pick the fall. Because in the fall, the trees, they're beautiful, aren't they? All the red and the orange and the gold and the crunchy leaves. So I'm going to pick fall. Um, you talk a lot. Of, I mean, this book is about how you hear the season speak. Um, but what does it mean to hear the season speak? You know, we can't hear trees actually speaking, but how can we see God and hear the seasons speak through the seasons? Well, you know what, Olivia, it's true that trees don't sing, but they do make a beautiful sound. If you open your ears on a windy day, when the wind is blowing, have you ever heard the leaves rustling 
They make a beautiful sound. And there's a great big long word for it that my brother in England taught me. I didn't know. I like new words. This word, word is called scytherism. Isn't that a cool word? And That is a cool yeah, word. I know. Don't ask me to spell it because I would have to get my dictionary out. But scytherism is when all the leaves are shaking and rustling on the trees. So I want you and, and any friends who are listening, I want you next time it's a windy day, go and stand under a tree and see if you can hear the scytherism. And um, I don't know. I just find God outdoors. We can't see God. God is invisible. But when I hear the leaves rustling um, or when I hear waves, when they splash, you know, on the shore, it just reminds me. How beautiful is our world that God made? And yeah, we we can't we can't hear the waves singing, but you have to imagine it. You just have to imagine if the mountains had a voice, how would they sing? You know, so it's fun to imagine. Wow. Um, before we got started reading, you had mentioned you had asked us to pick out a favorite illustration. Do you have a favorite illustration from the book? I do, I do. It's a, again, it's hard because um, there are so many great ones. Do you know? Let me tell all everybody who's listening. Um, C. B. Kanga, like I live in Michigan, and here in Michigan or in England where I used to live, we have four seasons, and they're they're all different, just like they are in the book. But C.B. Kanga lives over in California on the West Coast. And where he lives, Olivia, you won't believe it. There's only two seasons. There's the wet and the dry. So oh, my he goodness. Has I know. He has never really lived through winter, like when it's snowing. He has never lived through fall when all the leaves fall off the trees and the trees change colours. But you'd never know that, would you? Because his pictures of fall are just the best. So since fall is my favourite, and um, I'm going to pick a picture in fall, but it's not this one, even though it has my favourite woodpecker on. That's a massive big bird called a pileated woodpecker. Um, and it's not this page, even though it's got the kids jumping in leaves. And it's not this page with the geese. But I mean, I love them all. Wait, did I go past it? I'm going to have to go back. It's not the cornfield on this one. This one is my favorite picture. And just because the rivers are clapping their hands, although I love how. C.B. Kanga did that. I love this one because C.B. Kanga didn't know that I did this once, not when I was a kid. I mean, I might have done it when I was little, but I did it when I was a grandma, and it was so scary. It was a few years ago, and me and my husband were on a hike in the woods, and we were so tired, and we just wanted to get back to the parking lot. And so we thought we'd take a shortcut across the river. And it's a true story, Olivia. And so, but I was a bit scared because I didn't want to fall in the river. It wasn't deep, but it, it, but it was a river, right? And so my husband said, don't worry. I have a good idea. Let's get big, long pieces of wood that had fallen on the floor and make them into like walking sticks. Have you seen people walking with two sticks? And, huh? and it helps them. Yeah. Well, he said, let's make walking sticks and we can put them down in the water and touch the bottom of the river and it will help us across. And I thought, that's a great idea. And he went first and he did it perfect. And he, he, he went, do 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 and he got to the other side and he said it's easy Glenn and so then I started and I, it, you won't guess what happened I was putting my sticks in the water just like he did to help me balance and all of a sudden 
I put one down and it snapped in half. And I went, what? Like this? What, 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 what? And David said, it's okay, hold on, you'll be fine. Well, I didn't fall in. I, I, I must have said a quick prayer. And, but it was terrifying, Olivia. And then I just carried on very slowly, very slowly. Do, 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 till I got to the other side. <laughs> but isn't it brilliant that C.B. Kanga did not know that that had happened to me? So when oh, I saw this, word. I know, when I saw this page, I thought, oh my gosh, I've done that. <laughs> so that's my, that's why it's my favorite. Wow, I can see that. That is quite the story. I know. I have to say, I think my favorite illustration is this one right here. Mm -hmm. The one on the beach. And why do you like that? I like this one because I grew up uh, near the ocean. And this makes me remember all those times I went to the beach as a kid. You know, when you run into the waves and you try and run back before they splash on you and it just reminds me so much of when you're at the ocean and you can hear all the waves crashing here I'll hold it up again yeah it's sort of it reminds you that you know God is God is is bigger and and um all all powerful and all knowing and he made and um God yeah. made this so it's yeah that's so true Olivia I'm I'm happy that like when you read the book or you see the picture of the ocean, it brings back memories for you because I love that about the book. I think it's not just for kids because when adults read it, they can remember times when they were at the ocean or times when they balanced across a log on a river or when they jumped in leaves. So I hope it brings happy memories for everybody who reads it. Um. Okay, another question for you. For all of our friends who are listening, how how can we find God in the outdoors today? What can we do after this story time together? Oh, that's a good question, Olivia. Well, you know what I'm going to do after I finish today on my um on my laptop. It's a beautiful day here in Michigan. The sun is shining and I live near a little lake and um, I, I'm looking at trees right now outside my window. I'm going to take a walk and um, I hope you might do that too wherever you live, even if it's raining. Do you know it's beautiful walking in the rain? If you put a raincoat on, you can hear the rain on the grass and on the trees. And it's a really pretty sound, like I mentioned in the book. So I think a really good way to feel close to God is go outside, take a walk, and thank God for everything you see. Thank God for the sky and uh, the birds and that you can walk in this beautiful world. Walking is free. You don't have to pay anything to go for a walk. So I hope my listeners will do that today. Um, now you've put together quite the packet of activities to go with this book, mm -hmm. um, which you can find on songoftheseasonsbook.com and on the Paraclete Press website. Mm -hmm. But um, would you mind sharing with us all the different things that we can do to accompany this book? Yeah, of course. Well, there is um, for parents who are listening today or grandparents or um, child caregivers, there is um, like a parent activity pack that you can download. It's got colorings in. It's got it's got some Bible verses that are, that are all about how God made the wonderful world. And you can color those or there's coloring sheets from the book. Um, and there are there are beautiful like Bible verse cards that you can download and print out. And if you make two sets, you could play. I, I don't know what game you call it, but you know, when you turn the cards over and you try to find two matching pairs, I call it pairs. You can play a game with them or you can put them in a little box and you can read one at meal times or bedtime. So there's a parent activity pack. Oh, and I wanted to tell my friends who are listening 
if you download those coloring sheets and you just pick your favorite and color it in, and if you get your parent or whoever's looking after you to um, send it to me, you know, I'm on Facebook or they can email it to me. It's just glennisnellis at gmail.com. And I'd love to see your colorings and I will share them on my Facebook author page. So uh, please do that. And then something else you can get, which is a free download from songoftheseasonsbook.com is a, an idea for a story walk. If you work in a church or you know a pastor or somebody who works in children's ministry, tell them about the story walk. They can take the book and they can use all the pictures to make a story that you can walk through. Isn't that a fun idea? And the other thing is there's a whole curriculum. There's whole lo loads and loads of teaching resources, ideas for using your Bible as you read the book. There's ideas for art activities and games, and it's all free. So I hope people might take a peek at those. Well, that's amazing. Those can be found at songoftheseasonsbook.com and as well as on the Paraclete Press website. Um, thank you so much, Glennis, for being with us here today. It was so great to talk with you and to hear this story read by you. Um, we love this book, and I know all of our friends have enjoyed this time together as well. Um, so you can find Song of the Seasons on paracletepress.com. It's 15% off today on our website. The other thing that's 15% off today on our website is Glennis's new book. Uh, it's called God's Perfect Peace. It's the first book in her Bedtime's Blessing series. It'll be coming out in February, uh, but it's a perfect bedtime book with beautiful, again, more beautiful illustrations of lots of creatures and uh, forest animals like the bears that we saw today. Um, and you can also find that on the Paraclete Press website. That's 15% off today, and that book will be coming out in February. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. We'll be having our next story time and our last story time will be next Thursday at this same time, 1130 Eastern, and that will be with author Lisa Hendy. She'll be reading from her story, I'm a Saint in the Making, and we hope that you'll join us there. Um, Glennis, thank you so much for being here today. It was great to talk with you. Oh, you're welcome, Olivia. Thanks so much for having me. And thanks to everybody who listened today. All right. Well, have a good day, everybody. And we hope to see you next week. See you later. <laughs>